Hello and welcome to this podcast on reading at university. My name is Naomi and I work in the skills team in the library. I'm joined for this podcast by Holly, who is the library's repository and open access librarian. We'll talk just a little bit first about reading for university so, and how that might differ from other types of reading. And this is particularly thinking if you haven't started university or if you've yet or you're just starting your course, how to make that adjustment towards developing the skills for reading for university rather than other types of reading that you might have done. So in terms of how is it, how is it different? How is reading for university different from other types of reading? And the first thing that I've noted when I've thought about this is that you, you need to read it, but you also need to understand it. A lot of the reading that we might do outside of this context will be for different purposes. So you read for pleasure, you read, might read a newspaper, you might read things online, and all those things are for different reasons and you need different skills to do it. But when you're reading for university, you do need to be able to understand what you're reading as well. Did you find that um, when you went to university, Holly, did you find you made that adjustment easily do you think um i think in the first year i struggled a bit with it to be honest particularly in relation to um accessing journal articles and things like that you know before i started the university i didn't necessarily know what a journal article was mm. or that that type of thing would be something that i'd need to engage with to do a research yeah. or a university degree and like you say, it is, it is quite a different thing because you might, you know, you might really enjoy the topic, the course that you're on, but there might be certain elements of that course that are perhaps more difficult to grasp than others. So, you, you know, when you say you need to read, but you also need to understand, I think that can be quite problematic mm. in the course that you're on. I certainly used to find when I was reading something at university, I. I'd be sat there reading it and then I'd stop and I'd think I have no idea what I've just written or what I've just read you know I I need to go back and read that properly yeah. very easy to slip into not reading something properly and then think you know what I've sat and I've read that and I couldn't tell you what it what yeah. it was that I've read so it's very you have to sort you have to be thinking as well as reading I think whilst you're doing it yeah and I think you know when you like when I did I did an English degree and I had to do a critical theory module which was oh, incredible. Done loads of reading yes I did so much reading you know sometimes we'd have to read two texts a week plus other you know uh, sort of secondary literature mm. um and I, I remember reading critical theory and some of the stuff was so complex that I used to read like um a more accessible text to try and get the ideas and understand the ideas and some of the lecturers will probably kill me for saying this but I used to go to Wikipedia yeah you know look up com the complex terms just because it was such a, mo a much more accessible way of understanding these different theories and then you know mm. it really helped me understand and appreciate what it was that I was reading, like you say, like you just said, sometimes you read something and think, I've no idea what this is, what this means. But then if yeah. you go off and find something a bit more accessible, but talking about the same things, it can really help, I think, develop your understanding. Yes, sometimes you need you need a certain level of understanding of the topic and then you can go back to what you were reading and then now it makes sense because you've got that base level. Absolutely. Ready to, to understand what more detailed stuff. Yeah, I agree. That's, you know, some things you just get, some things you just need a bit more clarity on, don't you? So. Yeah. Um, so I thought we'd talk just about two different types of academic source. There's obviously lots and lots of different academic sources and which ones people um, will look at and will use will depend very much on their course. So I thought we'd just talk about two um, in the scope of this podcast. So academic textbooks and academic journals. And academic textbooks are really interesting because they look very familiar. Well, they often depends what size they are but they look familiar a book a physical print book looks like a book so it a, a yeah. physical print academic textbook looks like a physical print book that you might read for pleasure but they're actually very 
different again it's not the same as reading a book for pleasure and I think a really key point to make is that you shouldn't put pressure on yourself to read that book cover to cover Um, because that's often it's not how they're designed to be read often is it Holly no and you know that will probably drive you insane if you try to read it (laughs) to cover um unless it's something that you're you know I mean I've got a lot of books textbooks that I kept from my degree and I can see one now on my bookshelf which is a companion to romanticism you know poetry Mm -hmm. poetry. um but yeah I would never ever have contemplated reading that cover to cover because it's something like you know 2,000 pages long um and I think the whole thing on a degree is that you're dipping in and out of different resources Mm. you know so with what I always did with textbooks was I'd either, if it was a particular theme, I'd look that theme, see if there's any chapters relating to that theme. And this might be a bit old fashioned, but I always used to go to the index and look up like keywords mm. in the back of a book. Because you might, that might just alert you to a few pages within that text. And you never know, there could be something there, which, you know, really um, is just what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the tech well it, obviously it's a fantastic resource but it's yeah it's way too much information in one to look at it from you know front to back yeah and of course now we've got this huge rise in ebooks so yeah. an, an ebook an electronic um version of a book is even easier to search because they've off, they've got search boxes so you can pop yeah. in your keyword and yeah. find all the times it appears in the text yeah so that can be really helpful it can be but um I think you know you definitely need to just think about like we just said keywords key themes because otherwise you can start getting overwhelmed I think by textbooks um yeah yeah so the other source type that um, I thought we'd talk about was academic journals. And these, again, they come in a wide variety of um, different formats, don't they? they? You can have all sorts of different kinds of academic journals, depending on, on all kinds of factors. But would you say, I see this is me, this is me, a non-librarian, asking you, a librarian, this kind of question. Do they all have abstracts? Um, in the majority, yes. I have seen some that don't have abstracts but it's more it's kind of classed as a journal because it's produced in a journal but the actual product itself is more like maybe a book review or something mm, so it yeah have an abstract, but I think yeah 99% of the time you're going to have that abstract because otherwise because it just synthesizes the research doesn't it in that one paragraph yeah. it's a summary yeah. of what the article says like the blurb on the back of a book yeah almost fundamentally yeah and I certainly found when I was studying, very often that's all I read. That's all I needed to read was the net, was the abstract. Um, and if I could get the information I needed from that, then I didn't read the whole article. Yeah, I mean, the abstract you can you read that, won't you? And then you'll think, right, this is for me or it's not for me. You know, straight yes. away, that's going to give you the information that you need, whether you get, you need to read more of the article or whether you can just discard it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think academic journals abstracts can give you well it gives you the overview doesn't it of the article yeah so if you didn't have that it would be a lot more difficult yes definitely because you would have to start reading the whole thing and yeah and again then within that journal article you can often find different um different sections and when you're studying at university you might be mirroring this in the assignments that you're you're writing but certainly if it's a research article where research has happened you'll generally have a methodology section where the authors talk about how they did their research you'd have a results section where they talk about the results that they found an analysis section where they think about what that might mean and then a conclusion where they conclude their ideas I always get um I, I tended to be tricked into going to the results section because I think I I I have to say I have never found a methodology section interesting um depending on what you're studying that might be a really really key section of a journal article but I've never bothered with methodologies I don't I suppose it, when you're being critical you need to think about um all these things as well but anyway I've never found it interesting the methodology and I go straight to the results but actually sometimes the results can be quite technical and often they involve statistics and things like that so actually yeah. I find the analysis the most useful where they're actually talking about the results and what they mean yeah 
but yeah I when I was kind of studying I'd always go for the abstract and the conclusion really I think yeah a lot of the time the conclusion can kind of just sum up it summarizes the whole document really um and you can think to yourself well that's again that's something that is going to be useful or it's not going to be useful but I must say I think I read a lot of journal articles in their entirety Mm. just because what I was studying was so interesting you know yes yes I was talking earlier about how it's not the same as reading for pleasure but actually hopefully we're all enjoying our studies so hopefully it is reading for pleasure but not 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 the same as reading fiction maybe I should say no so maybe don't read a textbook cover to cover but read your academic journal from start to finish (laughs) Thank you very much to Holly for joining us and thank you for you, to you for joining us. One of the best things that you can do to improve your reading skills, particularly reading at university, is to practice. Practice reading these types of things, academic textbooks, academic journal articles. One of the ways that you can do this, particularly before you start your studies with us, is by reading open access resources. These are academic resources that are freely available without needing to register, without needing to pay for. Open access resources will be the topic of our next podcast, which is available now.